Hey, I'm She Says, and you're watching the 125th episode of Boundary Break, a show where we basically take the camera anywhere we want, and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. So it's finally happened. I am covering Five Nights at Freddy's. I never imagined this would be the case, but then they released a fully 3D version of all the classic games and more, and so it makes perfect sense to cover it on a show like Boundary Break. And I understand that Five Nights at Freddy's has a community all on its own, and so to kind of celebrate that, I decided to bring on one member of that community, Daco. He's a FNAF YouTuber with over 1 million subscribers, and I decided to have him on as a guest to cover a couple of scenes. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to look at is the hub area. Now, this is completely lit up. Normally, there is some really moody lighting in this area. But for the sake of showing you everything up close and easily, uh, we're going to make sure that everything is visible. One thing that's really interesting is that this monitor here was originally flat screen. Taking the camera inside of this back panel shows you that there's more details on the opposite side of the panel that's completely covered up by the other piece of geometry that makes it look like a large tube. And as you can see, there are ports for the red, green, and blue, as well as white and red, audio and video. But that's not even close to as special as something we're about to show you right now. Way outside in the void, you can see a table and a light. And what is on that table is a button that says end showtime. Now I asked a FNAF expert, Super Stu, what the heck this could possibly mean. And he explained to me what it's supposed to do. See, at one point there was plans to program a showtime button. And although the showtime button is there, when you originally pressed it, Freddy Fazbear and gang are supposed to do a musical number. However, it was scrapped and make come out in the future, but currently it doesn't exist. And so the end show time button is all the way out into the void, along with an additional light. Another funny thing too is that there's an employees only door, and if you take yourself inside of this door, you'll see that there's no room on the other side, but on the other side of the door is another employees only sign, except for the fact that it's resting above the door instead of on it. And also if you take the camera on the opposite side of this prize booth, you can see a white cube. And really quick, if we take a good look at Five Nights at Freddy's 2, you might remember that you're supposed to wear a mask at certain points to ward off some of the animatronics. So the question might pop up in your head, what does it look like when you put on the mask from another angle? And you know, of course it's a little underwhelming. Your camera is not supposed to have any physical being there. Otherwise it would just get in the way of your camera, as well as a waste of the developer's time and resources. So for every single map in Five Nights at Freddy's VR, there is a giant gray sphere. Now at first I didn't quite understand what this was for, but at a certain point, it all clicked. And that moment in which it clicked for me was when I decided to pause the game's footage when we reached the end of the level and pan the camera out then. It shows you that the screen that's used to make it from 5am to 6am, the victory screen in other words, is stored inside the sphere. And so by association, your player position gets warped over there as well. So you can see the 6am here and the main map all the way down there. And the victory screen isn't the only thing that uses the sphere. For example, when you lose the game and an animatronic is all in your face, yeah, that animatronic is stored in that sphere as well, as well as the static screen that's used immediately afterwards. And what's funny about this static screen is that there is something a little bit odd about it in a different map. In this map, Trick or Treat, if you look below the map, you can see that there's a static screen there at all times. Very odd decision, but it does remain there at all times, and when the player loses, he just gets transported to this one spot. But that's not the only weird thing about Trick or Treat as well. This is the only map that I was able to find where if you take the camera outside the boundaries, you can see a cone that represents the player. So there you go, that's you. You're right there, you're that cone. And when you're inside the cone, it's not double-faced. So none of what you're seeing here can be seen by the player, but the way that the cone is moving right now, that's entirely due to my influence. I'm moving the mouse around and showing you what it looks like when you look around from a third person perspective. Also, I want to just take a nice slow moment to give you a tour of the mansion. I know that you guys don't get a great look and there's a lot to look at, including the animatronics just walking around on the inside. It seems unfair that you don't get to explore it yourself. But rest assured, there isn't too much to see once you get outside of the boundaries. The developers just simply didn't take the time to make anything around the corner because they knew that you weren't going to see it. Let's take a look inside Spring Trap model. Inside you can see human organs, a skull, and human eyeballs. For those uninformed, this is the corpse of William Afton, the villain of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, aka the murderer who killed a bunch of kids inside a pizzeria. The children's spirits try and get revenge on William, and William tries to hide inside a springlock suit. The suit snapped and killed William Afton inside. Trapped 
rotting inside the suit for 30 years. And that's how we see him right here. Organs still rotting in his empty skull. Next up in FNAF 4, we got something that shouldn't be here. Over in this wall, there is something that you can see as the player, but you can't quite make out what it is. Taking the camera inside the wall, though, shows you that there are two objects. And these two objects should look familiar to you. Maybe not immediately, but when it's explained, it might ring a few bells. So the tan object is the board used to select what camera you're looking at on the security footage in FNAF 1, not FNAF 4. Obviously that doesn't exist here. So what it's doing here, I'm not entirely sure. And why it looks so different is because there is a dev texture that seems to overlay the board itself. But taking the camera just below the dev texture can show you untextured buttons. And right next to that is the clock that's used in FNAF 1. Although this is also completely untextured, there are silhouettes that make it very easy to indicate what object it was supposed to be. For example, the button on the side here, if you look at the original footage from FNAF 1, you can see it lines up perfectly. And then over here for one of the darkroom minigames, this is wild. If you move the camera a little bit forward and then turn yourself around, you can see unused instructions that were used for the dev team. This is likely used for the QA testers so that they could understand exactly what they're supposed to do. And rather than completely purge it from the game, they just position the text in a way that it can never be seen by the player. The same thing happens in the Halloween DLC as well. And while we're here, there's a special mask used for one of the dolls. Taking the camera inside, the mask can show you that the red dots are assigned to a black texture. And the red dots are in fact spheres. Gives me Dr. Mario vibes for some reason. But anyways, let's do a viewer request. As always, you can follow me on Twitter. Twitter handle should now be down in the corner here. And the viewers want to know if there was a kitchen modeled for the first FNAF map. And unfortunately, no, that's not the case. Even pointing the camera at where the entrance to the kitchen should be shows that there's no door leading to it. But I suppose a consolation here is that we can get you a nice zoom out of the entire FNAF 1 map. And you know, all things considered, it's nice to see most of this established establishment shown in one shot. Now let's talk about some various things that we found throughout all the floors. In the title screen for the game, you can find a white cuboid inside of Chica's head. Why it's there, it's not entirely certain. It's speculated by some programmers that it might be used to track the head movement. And then inside of the animatronics themselves, you'll find a full body frame for each one. So unlike most games where the insides of these models typically don't have something on the inside, since it's hardly ever seen by the player, the developers for FNAF have them fully modeled inside and out, which in a lot of cases plays a role in some of the later modes. So it makes some amount of sense. There is something that's even more interesting that doesn't get used in any of the modes that I'm going to pass off to Darko. Next off, we take a dive into Funtime Fox's auditorium. Now with everything brightened, this place looks huge. Usually we can only see the exit sign and a small area surrounding us. But with the lights on, you can see all the pipe work, the checkered floor, and how big the area is. Now what's interesting, if you just continue to walk without flashing your light, Funtime Foxy never appears until the jump scare. Foxy actually only appears when you flash your light. This is actually kind of weird to see. Whenever I played this level, I always thought that Funtime Foxy was in the darkness watching me. So it's really interesting to see that Foxy isn't actually there when you walk around. Now here's where things get really crazy. In FNAF 3, there's various arcades that you can barely see on the security cam footage. But taking the camera over here shows you that there's a lot more detail to these things than the camera picks up in normal play. Going across the board here, we got Burger Bungle. And it looks like on the screen there are various condiments that slide by that you're supposed to squirt on the patties. The buttons read jump, pepper, and boost. Next up is Sushi Smash, and it looks like it was developed by Decogon. The buttons on this cabinet have a punch and dodge. Next one is Raise, and it even has a little tip underneath the screen to give you cheats. Just a little surprised by that. But then above the cabinet it says enjoy the game, don't cheat. Anyways, next up is Lightning Fast Action Super Void. In this fictional world it's a 1987 game and it's developed by Crumpler Gaming. And the last arcade cabinet is called Bomber. It's honestly got a very nice looking cabinet and on the side you can see a skull made up of computer font. Now a few of these cabinets have some extra details in the back too. Like on the back of Bomber here, there's the usual stuff you see on the back of cabinets as well as at the very bottom it says old school. It's really hard to make out but you can see it as well as a texture for a plug. And this one over here doesn't have a plug but it seems to have vents which is very interesting. And just for fun, here's a flashlight game and this is what it looks like when it's completely illuminated. Surprisingly, there is a lot of animation here. And I say that because in the main games, the animatronics tend 
to warp into certain positions, but here it's a little less like that. The animation isn't completely fluid, it does sometimes pop a character into place, but they do generally have to move into position. All right, let's start talking about a whole lot of things regarding the Halloween DLC. So first off, we're in the hub world here, and there's a lot of things to talk about in terms of the hub world. Probably the most interesting thing to talk about is this house over here on a presumably haunted hill. Taking the camera over there and showing you inside of the red illumination shows you that there are dead textures on the inside of the house. But that's not all. If we completely illuminate the entire area, you can see that the outside of the house also has dev textures. It's just incredibly hard to see with the original light because it's pitch black. By far the weirdest thing that I found and it was just straight out of curiosity. Not often enough do I take myself completely outside the sky dome. But I was really thankful that I happened to this time around because taking the camera outside the sky dome in the hub world for the Halloween DLC it shows you that there's a white and black void with a sun off in the distance. The white part of the void here, if you take a lot of time, you can see that you can walk away from it and that it has a round shape. However, the sun off in the distance cannot be reached. I tried. I had it running for probably about 30 minutes and I noticed that there was absolutely no change in the size of the sun, meaning that there was no distance captured between when I started and when I finished. So I gave up on that pursuit. But like I said, you can see here that there is a large, large, large white void that seems to be used for some reason. And it is really, really, really far outside the player's view. This hub world map is huge. And to think all we have to do is tap a computer. The atmosphere around us is absolutely insane. Let's boundary break it. I know this place has so many details, guys, right? But I want to show you something a little bit on the small scale. Look at this little cutie. These are the models of the bats that fly around the hub world. And you can see how detailed they are with the red eyes and textures to represent their short fur and even skin texture on their wings. We don't really know why Steel Wool took the time to model these bats. We never get to have a close look at them. I don't know what we can name this little fella. Maybe give him a nickname in the comment section. <laughs> Moving on to the big red lake behind us in the hub world. This actually has an easter egg. You can actually see the tentacles below the lake waiting to interact with the ship. Now this easter egg encounter is pretty rare and there are a few other easter eggs in the hub world as well. There's also a Freddy that comes out of the pond and travels all the way into the barn. And there was a couple of viewer requests asking exactly what happens when he goes inside the barn. Well, the answer's not terribly exciting. It is for me because I know that most of the time when a character's off screen, they tend to disappear or unload. And in this case, he just stays inside the barn like he found his place in life. And this was also a massive viewer request. Some people wanted a zoom out of the cornfield. And I don't blame them. There is a lot of cornfield here that would make a zoom out all the more entertaining. So here you go, a nice big long zoom out of the cornfield. Oh, I almost forgot the puppet. So the puppet starts off in this gift box here. And if you take the camera inside, you can see the position in which the puppet is posed in, which is kind of uncomfortable looking to be honest with you. And of course we gotta do a zoom out of the second game's map and as you're gonna see here all the party rooms in this game are stored in the back of the map. They're not organically connected like they normally are in all the other maps. Now if I have to guess why that is I assume it's because it probably would actually clip into the other areas which would not look good. And I'm just gonna give you just a couple more seconds to soak that in and now we are going to FNAF 3 and we're gonna do a zoom out of this map as well. I wanted to make sure I covered a couple bases here because I know that a lot of you are just wild with curiosity. You see these maps all the time, whether it be the 2D versions of the originals or this VR version, and you probably want to know what it looks like when you zoom out all these maps. I don't blame you because the series seems to be very, very restrictive about where you can go. And so thank goodness for the VR version that seems to model all these maps in full for the most part and allows a show like Boundary Break to finally show you what it would look like if you saw this from up above. Also, in one of the later versions of FNAF 3, there is a vent with fire at the end of the tunnel. Just want to show you what it looks like when you get to the end of that tunnel. It's just a texture for the fire. Anyways, let's move on. All right, I want to show you guys two more things. One is a teaser for the mall here. Normally, you're stuck in one little spot, but off in the distance, you can see a mall being constructed. Now, I just wanted to show you that it's three textures. They're all the same texture. Just one of them is flipped, and they're layered so that it looks like there's a lot more construction going on. It also gives you the illusion of 3D depth. But, in fact, it's truthfully 
just three cardboard cutouts. And I want to give you a good close up of various other things that are all over this map, like this porta potty that says Plaza. The phone number is 2222 2222 2222. There's also 55 gallons of aqua fresh right here and a truck. Now, this is all fully lit, so it's really hard to see this on the truck, but I assure you that even if the lighting was on correctly, it's still near impossible to read what it says. So I'm taking the camera up really close and we got B E R W I C K. So it's a Berwick truck apparently. And let's do a massive, massive zoom out of this map just to show you how stupidly huge the mountains are. So Surrounding this area and it turns out according to sources that these mountains are a prepaid asset from Unreal Engine So the developers did not model these mountains They were paid for which shout out to Matt for this little fact here And if you make it all the way through all the challenges of the game you get to see this scene with glitch trap It's very mysterious the game clearly doesn't want you to know or see too much But that's not what we do here And so taking the camera in a different area and also giving the hallway full light can show you just how far away glitch trap goes before his animation cycle is completely finished and as you can see it's not that far at all well anyways thank you guys so much for watching thank you Daco for doing this episode with me also thank you to Franz Boma for making the universal injector that made this episode possible also thank you so much to Neko Run who unlocked the ability for me to use unlit it allowed us to see a lot more of this game than the developers originally intended so thank you so much Neko Run and also thank you so much to Super Stew for generally being a FNAF expert as well as having a little bit of insight into how the game works so thank you so much to you sir and your community but anyways thank you so much for watching if you're a new viewer feel free to hit the subscribe button you're just gonna get more and more content that's related to boundary breaking so uh, you just don't lose out on that situation and if you're a long time viewer and you want to help out please by all means support the patreon one dollar is more than enough to get us closer and closer to the goal that we need so that we can get higher quality episodes as well as more episodes out to fans shout outs to the unknown gamer mana and steven olsen for helping out with the show your massive donations have really helped us stay afloat and i appreciate you greatly but anyways guys i need to get going we need to start working on the next episode it's gonna be a doozy hope all you fnaf fans really enjoyed this one again i love all fan bases and you guys are great so thank you for being so kind and watching the video. Take it easy.